Hello and welcome back to the class. My dear friends, now it's time for you to make a fundamental shift in your mentality. What do I mean, you ask? Well, as a person who's been learning Python for the last couple of days, I am sure to type your Python programs, you are using an integrated development environment or what we in short call as an ID. Now, 100%, you would have used one of these IDs. Am I right? Maybe the ID of your choice, if it is not here, please forgive me. But 99% of you would have picked one of these integrated development environments itself. But let me tell you, these IDs is useful only to a programmer who is doing traditional programming using Python. Who is going to use Python to build applications such as web applications or some kind of scientific computation application. But we are here to create data science applications. We are here to create machine learning algorithms. We are here to understand how to do deep learning algorithms. Well, let me tell you, if analyzing and understanding data is what you want to do, then you must leave your favorite editor behind and make a shift and start using one of these two editors. Yes, as you can see, the options is between Jupyter Notebook or Google Colab. Now you might be wondering why? Because my editor is capable of doing everything for me, Rohit, and it has never let me down. Yes, you're right, my friend. Let me quickly show you what do I mean. If I take you to one of the editors such as Spider, right? This is how the general layout of Spider looks. Now, one thing which is very common between all IDs is you have a space to type your code and the output of your code is always going to appear in a different section or on a different window. If you want, you can pop this out and make it a separate window, but in my case, all of them are one, right? If I were to just write one simple Python code, let me just create a for loop. So I will just tell for i in range and within the range function, I'm going to pass 10 as an input like this, 10 I would pass. I'll put the colon and inside that, I'll just print the i value. So I'll tell print i. Now you guys know range function is going to generate 10 values for you, automatically range begins from 0, so 0 to 9 is what you're going to get. And if in case I execute, you can see the output comes here like this. Of course, maybe it is not completely visible to you guys, but you've got 0 to 9. But what I'm trying to explain here is, code is on one side, output is on another side, right? But this is something which is unacceptable to a data scientist, unacceptable to a machine learning engineer. Why you ask? Well, my dear friend, let me give you a simple example. I'm just going to remove this code and I'm going to directly put some code here related to data science. Watch this. This is that code. Now, please don't try to understand what this code is. Definitely by the end of the course, come back to this video and read it. Every line of this code, I'm sure you will understand. But for now, this code is all about taking a data set, which is very, very fundamental to data science called as an iris data set and trying to visualize that data by plotting it in the form of a graph. In fact, nine out of 10 things that you will be doing in data science is all about taking data and understanding the data by visualizing it because we human beings are visual creatures. Only what we can see is what we can completely understand, right? So watch it. If in case I execute it, now you must be wondering, where is the output? My dear friend, output has come, but it is not a traditional console based output, right? What you have done is you have plotted a graph. Now, where is that plotted graph? It has appeared, but you must go to the plot section of your spider notebook or your spider editor. And that is where you can see it. And if I just, you know, pull this bar down, I can just enlarge it. This is the output of this code. And clearly you can see some kind of visualization is there. Now it's your duty as a data scientist or a machine learning engineer to look at this graph and infer things from it, derive information from it. That is your duty, right? Now you looked at the graph, you want to derive some information from it. And whatever you have derived or whatever you understood it, now your observations, you want to note it down somewhere. It's but natural. For example, maybe looking at this graph, I know that there are three distinct clusters of flowers here. 
I know, you might be thinking, where did flowers come? When I take up the iris data set, everything you will understand. But for now, that is what I have derived. Now, I want to note it somewhere. Can I, below this graph itself, add my observations? There is no such feature. Then what I'll have to do is, I'll have to open a new file here. See, I'm just going and opening a new file. And maybe in that file, I have to tell, there are three clusters of flowers like this. And I'll just zoom it so that you can see it properly. So I'll just zoom it a little bit. Yeah, there are three clusters of flowers is what I'll have to tell. Now, I'm just writing some dummy observation. But I could have many such observations like this. Now, look at my predicament, right? My code is in a separate place. This is my code, watch it. My output is in a completely different place. My observations is in a completely different place. Now, this is a nightmarish situation for any data science aspirant. We require something better, something which will allow us to write code, get its output and write your observations in one flow, in the same page. Well, is there an option like this? Let me show you. My friend, I want you to understand that you, a data scientist and a real world scientist are not very different. Because what is the duty of a scientist? Please understand the duty of a scientist is to try to perform experiments about things which he wants to understand. Note down the observations that he has gathered from his experiments and then come at a conclusion, a inference and through that build wonderful technological products based on those observations, right? Well, you are also no different. For you, what you are using is data. Data is not going to yield itself for you easily. You have to perform experiments on the data. And how will you perform experiments on the data? Well, that is by visualizing the data, by understanding the data. How will you do that? Well, that is where primarily statistics and probability is going to play a huge role for you. Using the different statistical, probabilistic and mathematical procedures out there, you are going to understand the data. And whatever you understand, you have to note them down in the form of observations. And it is based on these observations that you are going to be taking data-driven decisions for your company that you are working for. So, in general, this is the kind of editor which I want, right? I want it to give me a space like this where code can be written. If I execute that code, right below it, not on any separate window, right below it, I want the output of the code to appear. Right below the output, I want another dedicated space where I can write the observations related to the output that I have seen. In other words, don't you think this looks nothing but like a real world notebook where you write something, do some calculations, write your observations. So a scientist journal is nothing but a data scientist journal as well. Now, how are we going to get this data science journal? Well, my friend, it's very simple. This is possible using your editors such as your Jupyter Notebook or Google Collab. Now that you understood the need for it, let me give you a small glimpse of what a Jupyter Notebook really looks like. My friends, presenting to you the Jupyter Notebook. Well, one thing which can immediately catch anyone's attention is, if you look where the Jupyter Notebook is open, it is open on the Google Chrome browser present within my computer. Which obviously means to say that unlike an editor like Spider, which is a standalone application, Jupyter Notebook on the other hand is a web application. And what do you mean by a web application? Any application which runs on the browser of your computer is only a web application, right? So obviously your Jupyter Notebook is always going to open in the default browser present within your computer and in my computer, it is Google Chrome. Anyways, let me just open a new notebook and show you. Now before I open it, now some of you will be thinking, Rohit, how will I install Jupyter Notebook? How will I start Jupyter Notebook? Don't worry my friend, attach below in this video, is a PDF document which is going to guide you with the step-by-step -step procedure as to how you can install the Jupyter Notebook and just follow it blindly. I'm 100% sure 
you will have no issues in installing it. However, considering that you have read it and arrived at the same screen that I have, I am now going to open a new notebook. And how are we going to open it? I'll just go to the new button there and I'll tell Python 3 like this. And here you go, a brand new Jupyter notebook has opened and don't worry about all this. What each of this means and what it can do for you, I will explain. But clearly you can notice that something which looks like a cell has been provided for me. Now, what can you write in this cell? You can write code if you want. What does the code look like? The same data science code which I showed you previously, I'm just going to paste it here. Same code. Now, the beauty is, unlike spider, if I execute, output is not going to come on some other window. Output is going to come below this window itself like this. You can notice it. I'm just executing it and there you go. My visualization is available to me. So if I scroll on top, this is the code. Right below the code, I have my visualization. And automatically it has given me another cell. Now here if I want, I can write some more code or I can write my observation because that region can be used for multiple purposes. So see here, I'm going to write my observation. So I'll change it from a code based cell to somewhere to a markdown cell. What this means we will explore, but there I'll just write my observation where I'll just tell there are three different clusters of flowers like this. Of flowers. Beautiful. Now, don't you think this looks like your notebook which you were using in school or college? Scroll on top. You have some code written. Right below that you have your output also. Right below that you have your observations as well. Now this is an extremely powerful tool for any data scientist, for any machine learning engineer. And obviously my friend, from this point onwards in the course, we are only and only going to be using the Jupyter Notebook. Now, would you like to understand how to use the Jupyter Notebook? Stay tuned. All right, my friend. Now, please understand, I want to create a brand new Jupyter Notebook from scratch. Now, how are we going to do this? Very simple. What I'm going to do is, in my computer, inside the C drive, I'm going to create a folder called as Data Science. Now, inside this folder, I want to create a Jupyter Notebook, which I'm just representing like a notebook itself. Now, what is the name of this notebook? What is the extension? All that and more we will see. But how do you start Jupyter Notebook in this particular folder is the first question. Well, it's very simple. For that, please go to Windows, your desktop, go to the search bar in Windows and just type in Anaconda prompt, click on it. Once you click on it, this is how it should be looking like. And clearly you can see by default, my Anaconda prompt is in C drive user studio folder. But I need to take it to C drive data science folder. How do you do that? Let's come out folder by folder one step at a time. So I'll tell cd space dot dot and I'll come one step outside. Again, I'll tell cd dot dot. I'll come one step outside. Now I'm inside the C drive. Now from C drive, I should go inside data science. So I'll tell cd or change directory to data science like this. That's what I'm going to do. Any confusion? If I press enter, yes, I'm in the right folder and now I can start my Jupyter notebook. What is the command for that? Simple. Jupyter is the command. Space notebook is what you have to tell. The moment I do this and if in case I press enter, certain internal tasks are performed and Jupyter notebook will now be opened in your browser window. What does it look like? Let me show you. As you can see, the Jupyter notebook has opened as a web application on my browser. Now you can see that right now it is in this directory which I have created, which is data science. That folder is empty. So obviously you can see there is nothing here. The notebook list is empty, it says. Now, I want to create a new notebook. Now, how do you do that? Well, new is the button there. I'll just click on new and I want Python 3. So, I'll just click on Python 3. Automatically, a new notebook opens. Now, what I want you to understand here is right now, look at the topmost section. In the topmost section, it says untitled. Why does it say untitled? Because I have not given it a name, right? If I close that and I click on it, watch it. If I just go click on it, then this opens up. It's saying, give a name for the notebook. Now, I will call it as demo, like this. Now, I will just click on rename. The moment I click on rename, it has been renamed as demo. Now, this is the directory structure, right? C drive, data science, inside that the notebook was there. Now, you have given a name for that notebook and it's called as demo. But what is its extension could be the question at the back of your mind. 
Is it .py like all the Python files we have been using? No, my dear friend. This extension is not .py, it's .ipynb. And the full form of IPYNB is Interactive Python Notebook, right? Because yes, it is an interactive Python notebook, right? It is a Python editor in the form of a notebook which you can interact with. So my dear friend, always remember a Jupyter Notebooks extension is always dot IP. Any confusion to you? Anyways, let me remove this. Now, watch it all of you. The second part, this part is technically called as your menu bar. This is called as your menu bar. Each one of those, as we go ahead, I will explain to you. Why do you want to overload your mind with information? As it is relevant, I will only introduce. The third section, which is this part, is technically called as the toolbar, which is also very, very useful. But the main part of your notebook is this part. And you can see automatically a cell has been created. And this cell has an IN attached to it. Do you notice? The moment you see IN, you must understand, this is a cell inside which you can type code. It is a code cell. Can I type code in it? 100%. Watch it. I'll just go and I will tell print and inside that I will just tell hello world like this. Any confusion till here? Now you want to execute it. How do you execute it? Well, that is where the toolbar comes into the picture. Well, a beginner would use a toolbar to execute a cell. But as we go ahead, I will introduce you to all the different shortcut commands available in Jupyter Notebook through which you can easily do it. But right now, if I want to run this cell, I'll go and run and I'll just click it and the output comes right below it. Hello world. And automatically another cell has been created. And what type of cell is this? This is a code cell. As you can see, IN is there. Any confusion till this point of time, my dear friend? So, what I'm trying to say is, in general, Jupyter Notebook is a very, very powerful tool. But now, maybe you don't want to write code here. You want to convert this cell from a code cell into a cell where you can write some text. Well, the easy part is, go to the toolbar. Do you see this drop down here? I'll just click on that drop down. And there, there's an option called as Markdown. I will select it. The moment I click on Markdown, the IN disappeared denoting to you that this is no longer a code cell. If you write code, you cannot run it, you cannot execute it. But you can always write something inside it. I'll just click there and I will just tell hello like this. As you can see, it has come. But this is technically called as a markdown cell. Now a markdown cell is a cell inside which you can write markdown language. Now, what is a markdown language? In detail, as we go forward, I will explain. But let me show you something really interesting. I want this to become a heading, bold heading. If I go to the start, put a hash and leave a space, do you notice it became larger in size? It became like a heading. If I put another hash, it will become a heading, but a little smaller. Another hash, a little smaller. Another hash, a little smaller. However, if I put a fifth hash, it's not going to become smaller. See what happens? If I put a fifth hash, it became italicized. So you can control the way the text behaves. And if in case I just remove the cursor from the cell, clearly you can notice that this is how it looks. That hashes are not going to come. But if I go click on that cell, you can notice if I want, I can modify it. Remove one hash. Okay, remove some two hashes. Yeah. Now just execute the cell. You can see it looks this way. So your observations need not just be plain black and white text. You can have a heading, you can have a paragraph, in that you can have italicized words, you can have subheadings and many more. We will explore it as and when it becomes relevant, but I hope what a markdown cell is clear for you. Right now, please remember two cells you have to understand. One is your code cell, other is your markdown cell. Now, there are different modes in a Jupyter Notebook. There are different shortcut commands in a Jupyter Notebook. All this and more we will explore as we get hands on, get our hands dirty with code and start using the Jupyter Notebook. But in general, why this mental shift must happen from a traditional ID to the Jupyter Notebook is required for you to excel in data science. I hope it is crystal clear to all of you. Thank you so much for listening. Catch you on the next video.